Welcome back. Today we will start lecture 1-3 on steady state error and system type. The objectives for today's lecture are to derive the position, velocity, and acceleration error constants, to determine the steady state error of a unity feedback control system using the feed forward gain or closed loop transfer function, and to identify the steady state error characteristics based upon system type. Recall that the design of a feedback control system focuses on several ideal characteristics that you may want to use trade-offs to determine which ones are ideal for your system. But some of these characteristics are stability, transient response, steady state accuracy, reduced sensitivity to parameter variations, and disturbance rejection. Recall that the transient characteristics were settling time, time to peak, percent overshoot, and rise time. Figure one below is a review of the closed loop control system with a compensator or controller, plant, and sensor. And table one provides some examples of real world components that model these. A controller can be created with an operational amplifier or with discrete components such as resistors, inductors, or capacitors. Examples of controllers would be an integrator, a differentiator, a delay, a filter, low pass filter, band pass filter, or compensators such as lag lead, PI, PID, PD, or P. A plant could be a temperature difference or heat flow, a velocity or force, a rotary velocity or torque, pressure and fluid current, or voltage and current, or an RC or RLC circuit. A sensor for position could be a potentiometer, velocity could be an encoder or tachometer, acceleration could be an accelerometer, and temperature could be a thermistor or an RTD. Recall that the closed loop transfer function T of S equal Y of S over R of S is GC times GP over one plus GC GP times H. You can also write it in terms of descending powers of S in the numerator and denominator with a coefficient of N sub M on the numerator terms or in a coefficient of D sub N on the denominator terms. The three most common system inputs are the step, ramp, and parabolic functions. This is because in a position control system, this would represent an object with constant position, velocity, or acceleration. For example, a step input could, could be used to set an antenna to face a certain direction. A ramp input could represent tracking a satellite with a constant angular velocity. Lastly, the parabolic input could represent constant acceleration such as tracking a missile. In the next section, we will derive the steady state error for these three types of inputs. Recall that the error for the closed loop system is the output of that summer, so it's E of T is equal to R of T minus Y of T. The steady state error for a step input S of T equal A U of T would be given by the following. And notice that these equations were derived by using the final value theorem. And the way that we draw a step input, a u of t, would be a step function that's zero up to time zero, and then it rises to an amplitude of a. So from the final value theorem, the limit as t approaches infinity of e of t, or the limit as t approaches infinity of s of t minus y of t, would be equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of a u of t minus y of t, or a minus the limit as t approaches infinity of y of t. So using the final value theorem and finding the Laplace transform, we have e of s equals a of s minus a over s t of s. Remember this is true because when we think about our block diagram in the frequency domain, this is t of s and our input is A over S, and the output would be A of S over times T of S, which is Y of S, because the input is X of S. So E of S is A of S minus A over S T of S. So using the final value theorem, that's the limit as S approaches in zero of S E of S, or A minus the limit as S approaches zero of A T of S. 
So all of that simplifies to the equation that we're going to use in class, but I wanted to show you where it came from first, which is for a unit step or a step with an amplitude A, it's the amplitude times 1 minus T of 0. And you can also write this expression in terms of the numerator and denominator for the closed loop transfer function as A times 1 minus N naught over D naught. And so we also sometimes use A times D naught minus not n naught over d naught. Note that for the steady state error to be a zero, it, d naught would have to equal n naught. So now let's find the steady state error for a ramp input. If a ramp is defined to be a t u of t, then the steady state error for the ramp is the limit as t approaches infinity of e of t, which is a t u of t minus y of t, or a t u of t minus a t u of t convolved with h of t. So in the frequency domain, using the final value theorem, this would be the limit as s approaches 0 of s times a over s squared minus a over s squared t of s. And using algebra to simplify that, that's the limit as s approaches 0 of a over s times the quantity d1 minus n1s plus d0 minus n0 over d0. Note that the steady state error due to the ramp will only be finite if d naught equals n naught or the step input steady state error is zero. And when that happens, then ESS ramp simplifies to the following equation. And this is only true when d naught is equal to n naught. The steady state error for a parabolic input, p of t, is equal to at squared u of t, is given by the limit as t approaches infinity of e of t, where e of t is at squared u of t minus at squared u of t convolved with h of t. So using the final value theorem again, this is the limit as h s approaches 0 of 2a over s squared times d2 minus n2s squared plus d1 minus n1s plus d0 minus n0. And similar to before, note that this parabolic steady state error will only be finite if d0 equals n0 and d1 equals n1. So in order to have a finite steady state error for a parabolic input, you have to have a zero steady state error for the ramp and the step input.